to our new series called Animated, where we will be talking about all of our emotions. Mm. Okay, I need to wake up and get out of that. <sighs> okay, have you ever felt really like flat or tired? 
maybe when you just wake up and your brain's still really sloggy and you just can't seem to get up. Or have you ever felt really excited? Like so excited that you just can't stand still? Maybe when you're in line for your favorite ride at Six Flags and you just want the line to go. Big emotions make us feel alive and that's all what this series is about in Animated. We're going to be talking about all of the emotions that God gives us to use us. So let's take a look at our memory verse for this series. It comes from Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him. Start memorizing it now so you can know it throughout this entire series. Today we're going to be talking about sadness. Sadness is a big emotion and sometimes a little scary to talk about. Sometimes we can avoid being sad, but it's important to know that God can sometimes use us in that sadness. So let's go ahead and take a look at our big idea for today. The story takes place in Israel after it had split into Israel and Judah. The king of Israel was Ahab, and his queen named was Jezebel. They led the nation in serving false gods and killed many of God's prophets. God used the prophet Elijah to defeat the prophets of the false gods. You can read this story in 1 Kings chapter 18. Jezebel was so mad. She sent soldiers to find Elijah and kill him. Elijah was very afraid, so he ran away to hide in the wilderness. He sat down under a tree to rest. He felt exhausted and very lonely and discouraged. He asked God to let him die there in the wilderness. But God had a plan for Elijah. While he was sleeping, God sent an angel to bring Elijah food. The angel woke Elijah up and told him to eat. Elijah found bread and a jar of water. He ate it and went back to sleep. When Elijah woke up again, he found more food and water. So he ate again. Then he got up and began walking. The food gave him the energy to travel for 40 days to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. When Elijah got to Mount Sinai, God asked him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have faithfully served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you and killed every one of your prophets. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. As Elijah stood on the mountain, God sent a fierce windstorm, but God was not in the wind. Then God sent an earthquake that shook the mountain, but God was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. God was in the whisper. And God whispered, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah repeated the same reasons to God. I have 
faithfully served the Lord God Almighty. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you and have killed every one of your prophets. I'm the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. God knew exactly what Elijah was feeling. God knew Elijah felt sad that the people of Israel were worshiping false gods. So God knew he felt heartbroken and alone because many of God's prophets had been killed. However, God knew what Elijah didn't know. Elijah was not alone. God told Elijah there were 7,000 others in Israel who had never worshipped a false god. Then God gave Elijah hope for the future by sending him to find Elisha, who became his student and his friend. God comforted Elijah when he needed it most. Okay, so let's talk about sadness because quite honestly, we have some things that we can be sad about that are small and then we have some things that are really, really big and all kinds of things that are in between those. So let's talk for a moment about things that make us sad that are small. Like, let's say that you're on your way to school and you're really looking forward to your friend sitting with you on the bus, but it doesn't happen. And so you feel a little sad. Or maybe mom made a dinner that you really don't like. And so that made you sad. I mean, those are little things that kind of make you sad. But does God care about the little things in your life that are sad to you? I think so. What is today's big idea? Today's big idea is God gives me comfort when I feel sad. So can he comfort you in these small things? Absolutely. And it's a comfort to know as well that you are never alone because God is always with you. So maybe your friend didn't sit with you on the bus, but maybe somebody else did. And maybe you'll talk to them and make a new friend. That would be good. Or let's think about the dinner. Now, it might not be something that you really enjoy eating, but you have a family that you can gather with and you have food at your home. So you can be grateful and thankful for the things that God has provided. So let's go to the big things that can make us sad, like really big. And let's use Elijah as an example, because I can think of four huge things that Elijah had to deal with that were really, really a little overwhelming and very, very sad. He is used by God. He confronts these false prophets. God does this great victory using him. And then right afterwards, the queen wants to kill him. So one of the big things that he has to deal with is the fact that somebody wants to kill him. I mean, that's huge, right? And it scares him and he runs away. And then let's think about some of the other big things in his life, like being a prophet and telling them all about God's word and the people not listening and continuing to be disobedient and going in the wrong direction. Or how about that the king and the queen are doing these evil things and they're encouraging all the people in their kingdom to continue with the evil things. And then, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but something else that was huge that would probably be very sad in his life is the fact that all those other prophets that had been put to death, I bet some of them were his friends, people that he knew, people that he was close to. I think that would make him sad, don't you? So those are really, really big things that Elijah had to deal with. So where was God in the midst of that? Well, God met with him. He fed him gave him water, and then he spoke to him. This God, who we know is all-powerful, who created the wind and the fire and mountains, he chooses to speak to Elijah in a whisper. So what is something that we tend to do when we whisper? In addition to your voice getting quieter, you also tend to lean in when you go for a whisper. Did you know that? It's true. When you're trying to comfort somebody, you lean in in a gentle voice, try and calm them down. Well, God wants us to also lean into him so we can hear the comforting words that he wants to speak to us. Because often we have to focus in 
and really lean in our posture and our bodies to get rid of distractions so we can hear what it is he's trying to speak to us. In fact, I want to read a scripture verse to you. This is from Psalm chapter 42, verse 3 through 5. My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. So in this passage, we see the psalmist who wrote this is uh, just pouring out their hearts and their uh, feelings and emotions to God. But they end it by saying, God, I put my trust in you. I put my hope in you, my Savior and my God. I hope you guys can see why our big idea for today is God gives me comfort when I feel sad. God didn't actually promise that all the pain would leave immediately, especially when big and difficult things happen that really hurt us. But he does promise that as we continue to press in and lean in towards him and rely on him, continue to seek after and go after him, he promises to give us a peace and a comfort that cannot be explained, but something that only he can give, even if we are still feeling uh, those uh, sad emotions or that, that pain. He can still give us peace in the midst of that. So I want to pray. I want to ask God that we, he would uh, give us his comfort, that we would lean into him and rely on God uh, to give us strength, even when difficult times come, even when we do feel upset or lonely or sad. These feelings are important to him, and so we want to share it to him just like the psalmist did, so that he can give us our uh, the comfort that he wants to give us. But also, we want to thank him and praise him just like the psalmist did, even while we're still in the midst of it, because we know that God is faithful and he helps us. So why don't you guys uh, close your eyes with me, and let's pray together. God, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you, first and foremost, that you do uh, care so much about uh, our thoughts and our feelings, our emotions, that you uh, would comfort us, that you would uh, care to talk with us about the things that we're going through, things that we're dealing with. You care so much about these things because you are a good and loving Father. But God, we also pray that you would help us to process these things, help us to uh, express them to you. And then uh, to share our, uh, what it is that we're feeling and what we're um, thinking so you can give us the comfort. Help us to rely on you and to uh, trust that you're going to be our source of strength to get us through. Uh, help us to uh, present our requests to you and you tell us to come with an uh, expectant and thankful heart and you would give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Something that doesn't make sense to us or to other people, but something that is very real that we can have even when we are going through a difficult time. Thank you so much for how you're going to uh, be a comfort to us, and then help us to then be a comfort to other people. Thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, oh, see, there you are. I've been waiting for you forever. Oh, sorry, Benji. Uh, I'll do better tomorrow. Uh, or maybe I won't. What, what is that supposed to mean? Well... Is everything okay? I, I guess I'm just a little sad, that's all. Oh, sorry. Well, what are you sad about? Well, it's not really important. Hey, if you're feeling something, then it is important, Z. You're my best friend. You can tell me anything. Um... I had Brussels sprouts for breakfast. Oh, that's it? I mean, you're sad because of Brussels sprouts? That's nothing. I mean, the other day I had burnt toast for breakfast. That's ah. gross. Oh yeah? Well, the other day, my brother ate tuna fish right out of the can. Ew. Oh, oh yeah? Well, the other day, uh, we were out of milk, and so I used orange juice, juice in my cereal. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Well, the other day, they forgot the sauce, and I had to eat my nuggets without the beautiful, delicious Chick-fil-A sauce! Oh. Ah! Wow, that is bad. But, but see, that was just the other day. Why would you still be crying about that? 
Don't you see, Benji? I just did it again. My cousin, well, my cousin Jojo told me my feelings were out of control. She said I was worse than a toddler in a barrel of cotton candy with cocoa puffs sprinkled on top. Oh, but hey, see, you trust me, right? I'm your friend who's never steered you wrong. Well, except for that time when we hijacked the live stream for VBS. Uh, well, that was pretty cool. But, right, except for that. But, listen, feelings are big and confusing sometimes, and you are good at letting yours out and talking about them. That's a good thing. I wish I could be more like that. I mean, sometimes I pretend like my feelings aren't even there. Does that help? No, not at all. It makes me feel like I swallowed a giant pack of pop rocks when I'm in the library. Yikes, that's not good. Uh, so, you think showing my big feelings is a good thing? Yes, absolutely. But maybe you could think about your feelings a little more before you let them explode out your mouth. Okay, I can try that. Uh, but only if you promise not to keep your feelings stuffed down inside. It sounds like they would explode out eventually anyway. Yeah, you, well, you got a deal. Wait, why did you have Brussels sprouts for breakfast? Oh my, well, it's, it all started when my dog, well, he got his head stuck in the refrigerator. No! So that's all we have for today, but don't be afraid because we are going to be talking about so many more big emotions coming up in this series, Animated. So make sure you come back next week, okay? See you then, bye.